Hey guys, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, buckle up. We're gonna be taking some tours of some really beautiful houses. You guys are gonna love this video. I cannot wait for you to Okay, when will the housing market crash? That is the question nearly every single person in the United States looking for a place to live is asking, following 12 quarters of absurd, never-ending price growth. Hold up. According to Redfin, the average home buyer payment has increased by more than 90% since May of 2020, when just three years ago, a buyer could expect to pay around $1,300 a month average for their mortgage. Today, that number has increased to a record high of about $2,600 per month as of June 2023. The rental market is also showing a slow rental growth for its 13th straight month as of June 2023, as landlords are faced with rising vacancies due to inflation and people simply not being able to afford the price gouging. Which brings us to our next thing, homelessness. The number of homeless has increased as well. If you look at the charts, you'll see that California, New York, Oregon, Florida, and Washington are some of the states experiencing the highest population of homelessness among adults and children. I do not have the answers to solve this problem. I did think that going tiny would allow me to dodge it for a little while, and a little while is what it did. But after three years of living this tiny house lifestyle, I have come up against a lot of adversities. As far as finding land that's affordable for a place to park that doesn't have limitations on building codes or municipal ordinances or simply just restrictions against tiny homes. This has definitely been an uphill battle. And although this lifestyle has afforded me the ability to save faster, travel, help family, and do a lot of things that most struggle to do, living paycheck to paycheck, but this is now getting out of control. No matter how you live, whatever lifestyle you choose, unless you're financially wealthy, it's going to get worse. After scouring this country for a comfortable place to live, thinking about weather, standard cost of living, infrastructure, economical growth, and not being too close to a metropolitan city because I prefer natural environments, I was coming up short. I know that there are only maybe two places in this country that I'd want to live, and one of them I simply cannot afford. And that's why I'm thinking maybe I just make a bunch of donations, sell everything, including my tiny home pack up the rest, and call it a day on this American dream, which leads me to one of my other options, the capital of the Yucatan Peninsula, Merida, Mexico.
this the primary bedroom? I guess see, we don't call it master anymore. Primary or principal. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in the States about addressing them as master because of the whole slavery thing. Yeah. So, just so you know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are now going by primary.
Okay, this is the other one, model 136. This is a great kitchen. Yeah. Refrigerator, stove, you got the all. Ah, you got an oven. Oven. <laughs> There's a lot of structural damage on this house. You see it? <laughs> know for me and hey guys if you're interested in finding out more information about Merida and the Yucatan Peninsula the Mayan history and all that good stuff you might want to become a channel member because I'll be dropping some BTS some blooper videos and all that good stuff okay back to the video look at this door wow
Here is the second full bath, the kitchen. This is the dining area, that's the living room. I'm gonna go into this first guest bedroom. Nice big closets, gorgeous. Come out and then go into the other room, this one is smaller, so this one is more like an office. And this is the balcony that is shared between this guest room and this other room. They're still building. That's the security gate that we came through. So you can see they're doing a lot of building around here. So this is the... I guess bar. This is the kitchen. It just looks like what would be considered a galley, but it actually is more of a pie shape. So if I go backwards, then you can see the pie shape of the kitchen. And then as I step backwards, I'm in the utility room. And this is where you would have your laundry. That's your AC washer dryer hookup um, and a service bathroom so yeah that's everything this is where we're headed now yep okay is my buddy here so this is the showroom right Pause. Okay, ladies. I can see was talking, but it was really hard to pay attention after that. But I was just like, uh, yeah, okay, um, yeah.
everybody who might actually be interested in moving to Merida. Um, I am gonna just turn this camera on Agassi real quick. So here we go. So if someone was interested in moving to Merida, what would be the first thing that you want them to do? First of all, I want them to come and spend maybe a couple of weeks in Merida, looking at different areas, finding the feel of a home, of a new home. Tell people the difference between like here in Mexico, having a realtor versus having a lawyer and how important a notary is. Because a lot of people don't realize how important a notary is. Well, the notary is very different than the States. Uh, here, they have to make sure that everything is legal. Uh, the notary will be the one that is actually verifies everything we do. As an agent, we give them the, the paperwork, the legal paperwork, and the IDs, trust you're gonna get, more or less the fideicomiso, which is gonna be another uh, important part of your buy. If you're renting you're not in a fideicomiso, changes are happening right now that they're not only allowing us to rent a place with a passport. passport. They want expats to have their temporary or permanent residence. Have a realtor is a, is a plus because you won't be able to communicate with everybody. Not everybody speaks English. Yes, you will have uh, realtors or agents that will speak English, but instead of dealing with a lot of them, you may want to deal with one of us and, and be able to give you the options that you want and not just sell you what I want. And today you took me to this really beautiful, beautiful paradise. And I think it says paradise on the mat when you it walk is. in. It is amazing. I saw three units here and the showroom unit. And um, just this, can you just talk about how fast this area is growing and and also mentioned we are sorry i meant to say but cabo norte right which you say is the, the community the location the location cabo norte cabo norte is the location and meriden it will be or is the developer okay one of them one of the developers we have many. right because within cabo norte there are several several develop different developers right. And we pass one where they're building like houses. Houses, and not then, building. Right. Houses. And then here, this developer is doing the towers. The towers. Right. Which everything was all inclusive. You got the mall within walking. There's a private walking path. Seven minute walk. And, and I'm saying seven minutes is because you have to walk around, not straight line, right, just right, walk around. Right, to get to the mall. To, to get to the mall. You basically, you have, a, like you said, a paradise or at least a resort right. where you don't have to go anywhere. Right, because there was the massage area. The amenities. We'll the give amenities, you. yeah. We didn't, we weren't able to go into the gym, but I could see it from the window. Well, the reason why is because is what you... What you're getting is the security. Right. You don't want anybody to walk in. Right. And it was double secure. It, so it was, it was double, double secure. security. Yeah. It was more than one security. Yep. Um, we came through one and then we had to go through, through another, another one. one. To the building. To to get to the building. So definitely double secure. But here in Merida, a lot of people when I tell them that I'm planning to move to Mexico, they are concerned about my safety and Merida, um, from what I know, my research, is one of the safest cities in all of Mexico. It is. And the second safest city in all of North America, yes. with Quebec, Canada being number one. Number one. Yeah. Um, so even though you feel very secure here, you still have these private um, sectors. sectors that um, have gated communities. So everybody who's like, oh my God, Mexico, and clenching their pearls, there's no point, you know? No. 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 Um, it feels very safe here. And I mean, obviously you have your neighborhoods everywhere you go, where you wanna, yes. you know, be on your 
P's and Q's, you know, keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> but um, I've been here for, f for a couple weeks. This is my second visit and I haven't felt at any way. Well, I've been here 18 years now. And ever since I came here, it's, it's been a retirement for me. <laughs> Although uh, when I came, I was working for a company in the US, but then again, Searching for work in, in, in Merida has is, is actually been uh, phenomenal because you can do pretty much what you want in this place and you don't have to be looking over your shoulders if anybody's following you or I have never felt more secure than uh, any other place and I come from Chicago. Right. And you, you know, came or from live in <laughs> so you, Chattown. You know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay. I know. Well, any other advice that you would give for someone who is planning to, you know, make the move, come out of the U.S. and come on over to Mexico? Well, one of the things that I have here from newcomers to Mexico is, well, I hear this in Facebook. It's, uh, you need to live in a community area. Uh, you need to be very careful about lawyers. You need to be careful about agents. Well. I can tell you right now that the first thing you need to know is you need to come. That is the key. You need to come and feel. You cannot do things by distance and trust everybody. Mm -hmm. You have to come and meet us. Because if you don't meet someone that is going to show you the path, mm -hmm. you're still blind. Right. Even though you're still calling or talking to this person, but you need to come and right. see for yourself. That's right? like me. I needed to get out. Be here and see the areas yes. because you know Merida you have like some areas where there's nothing and then there's beautiful, beautiful. homes gated community and then there's like you know the locals and so it can vary within a block yes, radius it can, it can vary it so can. you definitely want to check that out and um, so, yeah, thank you so much, no, Agassi. You. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for showing me around Merida um, as my realtor. And if anyone wants to get in touch with Agassi, I'm going to leave your information. Please. Yeah. So you definitely want to hit him up. Something I want to mention, getting a realtor here is is a must because it's not like in the states where you're going to be able to just walk into a place and see it like in the states you can go to a model home development and just walk in you don't need your realtor with you it's completely different here you actually have to get a realtor my realtor came to me through my niece so i knew that he was someone that i could trust and wasn't going to try and be like pushy um, and that's different you you need to make appointments between your realtor and the realtor or the homeowner of the place that you're going to see that you want to see it's you cannot just walk in you cannot just you know and a lot of it is done via Facebook marketplace here there's no MLS so it's completely different you know you're going to be looking on facebook marketplace there are a lot of different groups that you would look to find something but once you have things in mind you can get a realtor as opposed to bouncing from one person to another person to another person to see things and also um, the realtors it depends on who they are what they are there may be a fee involved um, because obviously they have to eat as well again it's not the same thing as in the states um, where they're going to be getting a paycheck and you know whatever whatever so you have to make sure that you are comfortable with the person that you're working with they're going to let you know what their fees are daily um and then you guys would go out and see everything but it's it your realtor's not doing all the work for you you have to do a lot of the work yourself and then you let your realtor know so there's some differences um and so i just want to make sure i point that out okay garage and, your and then this is the main door okay
Okay, so if anyone is interested in making the move to Merida, Mexico, you definitely want to hit up my realtor, Agassi, and I'm going to leave all of his information below in the description. I'm going to also leave the information of this beautiful place and um, the developer uh, that we worked with today. What was his name again? Edgar. Edgar. He was cute, too. <laughs> Okay, this is what heartbreak looks like. <laughs> Just what I'm saying. He's married. Oh, he's married. Damn. Sorry, girls. He's married. Anyway, um, but yeah. So I will leave all of that information. If you're interested in visiting this area, Cabo Norte, it's definitely worth it it's worth it just coming to merida that's so much to see so much history you saw from my last video that i visited here i went to the mayan ruins and the cenote and just visited all of the different places and then you have like centro which has so much beautiful architecture down there I myself personally would not want to live in Centro because it's a little still it's a city and I kind of want to be off the beaten path and that was what I like so much about this particular development you really don't have to go anywhere I mean there's everything all the amenities amenities for the kids the pools playgrounds game rooms workout area fitness center massage room spa the best internet <laughs> there was at least three providers that you could use here which that's something you want to consider is that if you're going to be moving here you kind of want to stay within the periferico but you want to stay within a certain area because you're going to get better internet if not and you want to be on the outskirts like me I do want to be on the outskirts but I am in love with this place now um, you're gonna have to use something like Starlink is what um, Agassi was telling me in order for you to get good internet because there are a lot of expats here so if you're working remotely and you need really good Wi-Fi you want to stay either within the periferico which is where we are now or if you're going to move out further north or going towards the beach you're going to definitely need something like starlink um, to get that fast internet for sure so all right guys so now i'm back i hope you enjoyed that i hope you got something useful out of it um, we saw a lot of places so definitely couldn't make this a short video sorry anyway i'll see you in the next video thank you i love you bye all right guys i gotta give a big super shout out to all the new co-star members and to everyone who left me a super thanks and some of you sent cash apps for my birthday thank you very much i appreciate it if you haven't caught that live you can go ahead and catch it it's there and for those of you who wish me a happy earth day thanks i appreciate you and as i said in the beginning of this video i do not have all the answers for the issues happening here in this country but mexico is definitely a good option and I am selling my tiny house so if you're interested my realtors information will be in the description okay I love you